Well, hello, everybody. I'm Neil Barenblatt with Creative Cow, and welcome to yet another fireside tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to make objects interact with grass inside of Cinema 4D. So, we're going to be taking a look at how to use hair and apply it to an object. We're going to be using the hair collider tag, and then we're going to be using some MoGrab dynamics to create the physics we need for things to actually happen. So, why don't we? Go inside of Cinema 4D, take a look at how it's done, and I will see you on the other side. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome to Cinema 4D yet again. Here we are with our blank canvas. And the first thing we want to do is create a landscape model, which can be found in the little primitives thing or doodle up here. So if we click on landscape, we get this automatic landscape model. We don't have to do any work in Cinema 4D. That's how awesome it is. Now I'm just joking, we got stuff to do, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. So we get this awesome landscape model that uh, I believe, if we delete it and click it again, will come out random every time. Do it one more time. No, it's looking about the same, so forget I said that. And uh, we can actually ha change a lot of the settings here. So you can change the segments, you know, subdivisions right there, the furrows, how detailed you want this thing to be. Fine furrows, the scale, the uh, sea level, the plateau level, you make a mesa, and you can even make it, you know, spherical. You gotta scale it down though, or rather, actually scale it down, we'll just zoom out. Yeah, so you got your spherical thing there. But we just want the standard landscape, because we don't really need to worry about detail too much uh, while we're messing with this thing. Now the next thing you need to do is add hair to make the grass. Now uh, follow me here because it gets a little complicated around right here. You click on the hair tab and add hair. Wow. Okay, so uh, I think we're done here. Nah, I'm just joking. But I mean, that was pretty easy to, to get that across. I mean, we have our landscape, we have our hair, we have grass. Now if I go ahead and render it, it's some pretty ugly grass, and it kind of looks like uh, nose hairs a little bit. And we need to mow them nose hairs down. So what we're going to do is just that. If you click on the hair object and go into guides and go to the length tab right here, we just, uh, you know, it's like taking a ha nose hair lawnmower and mowing them down. Because that's how I trim my nose hairs um, <clears throat> with a lawnmower. And uh, I replace the blade with rubber bands because that's how you trim nose hairs. That's how we trim nose hairs in Cinema 4D anyway. So now if we go ahead and re-render, we have much more reasonably sized grass. Now the, the next thing I see that, that's just red flag to me is that this grass is still ugly and brown. So we want to change the color on it, which you can do in the hair material right here. So by double clicking that, and going into color. And uh, what I usually do is change the dark color to a dark green and the light brown color to a light green. And uh, that pretty much feels like grass to me. If you want, you can even add a third color to this gradient by clicking on the gradient and, you know, just giving it kind of like a backlight effect. Not that it'll turn out that way at all. But go ahead and render that. And yeah, we have much more grass looking stuff. It's all about faking it and making it look like grass. When in reality, I think you and I both know this is not actually grass. So yeah, that's looking cool. I think we need more because uh, yeah, I think we can see too much of not grass. So if you click on the hair and we can actually rename this to grass as not to be confused and this to ground. If we click on grass, which is what we'll call it now, we can uh, actually up the count so we have enough blades of grass to cover this entire landscape. And you don't want to do it in the guides tab. Instead, you want to do it in the hairs tab. So we can bring that up from 5,000 to, I would say, about 50,000. And this is going to increase them render times. But as you can see, it's going to make it much more worth it. We're starting to get good, uh, good clumping and just a good volume of grass, which uh, you can never have too much volume of grass. Because if we had more, then I think we wouldn't have to worry about deforestation and stuff like that anymore. 
yeah, you know, that's how logic works. But uh, after that, what you're going to want to do is actually make it l look like it's behaving a little more like grass. So we need to make it random and, uh, you know, just kind of uh, randomize the, the overall look and structure of this grass. And the first thing I always turn to in the material is frizz. You can really use any one of these. I just happen to think frizz looks cool. So I'm going to click frizz and just leave everything as it is now. And if we go ahead and render it again, now that's starting to look a lot more like grass. Um, I think maybe we can even go into thickness and kind of mess with, uh, with this curve a little bit. And render it again and I think we're gonna get even cooler looking grass yeah I, I kind of like that we could probably use a little bit more which is obviously going to up our render time so we'll change it to 65,000 and yeah I think that's gonna be fine now one thing you can do to hide all this gray mess which we will call gray antimatter from now on is to actually color it either dark green or I like to color it dark brown to uh, simulate the ground. And I used to do this until I, you know, this shade of brown until I realized that this was actually probably a little more, slightly more realistic. And actually before I do that, we can also add a bump to it. So if you go ahead in the texture and click check on bump, we can then in the texture pull down, add noise to this bump and make it a noisy bump. Basically we're gonna bump up the landscape. So if I click on noise, then we can choose different kinds of noise. And I happen to think Luca looks pretty sweet and has a sweet name. So that's what we're going to use. And we just up that bump a little bit right there and take this and drop it onto the ground and go ahead and re-render that mother. And bam, we got some good looking grass. I think it's, you know... It's cool looking. It's still a little, uh, everything's a little separated and we can't keep it that separated. So another thing you can turn to actually is fill hairs and bring this down to about 20,000. So it doesn't take ridiculously long to render and let's hit that button again. Yeah, I think that's definitely looking a little better. So we're going to stick with the fill hairs. Uh, if you think that, uh, that it just looks like they're still too much separated. Increase these, you're gonna increase your render times. It's something you're gonna have to live with. You can also try changing this brown to a green and see if that gives the illusion that, uh, that there's more grass there. You can probably even put a grass texture. Yeah, it actually does. It does give me the illusion there's more grass there. So I'm gonna keep that. I think it's looking pretty good. It looks random. Uh, these colors are, are really popping to me. I like it. So the next thing we're going to do is add our, uh, our object that's going to actually interact with the grass. Wow, I really pronounced the word interact pretty hard there. So let's add a sphere and make it a smaller and bring it up in the comp. And uh, yeah, I think it's cool if we have it roll down that way. It kind of looks like a either like a luscious mountain or like a, a really a really badly built mini putt putt course and which is which is actually funny because we have a golf ball looking thing right here so let's uh let's bring this over this way and put some uh physics to it i mean that's that's what we got to do and to do that we're going to use mograph because mograph rocks it kicks freaking arse so what we have to do is to to make this uh, readable by MoGraph, we have to drop it into a MoGraph object. And uh, we drop it into something called the Fracture Object, and we make it a child of it. And the Fracture Object is just a wrapper to put things in to make them uh, capable of using MoGraph. At least they are in this case. So we're gonna do that, and then we're going to right click and go to MoGraph Tags, Rigid Body, and voila, all of our dynamics are here. We can just copy, control click and copy that tag and put it on ground. For the ground, we actually don't need to put it in any sort of fracture object. Don't really ask me why, we just don't. So now if we go ahead and play this comp, 
Bam! Ball goes straight down the mountain. And we have these really cool curves to where the ball's kind of following this path. I really like it. It's going to make for some pretty interesting grass movement going on. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that if you select the grass and go ahead and play from the beginning, you'll notice that the grass falls straight to the ground. And that's because it's being affected by a force built into the hair mo module called gravity. And, uh, you know, gravity is uh, a natural phenomenon by which physical bodies attract with a force proportional to their mass. So take that into account while you're using the hair module and uh, let's set that sucker to zero. So if we go into the forces tab uh, under the grass object and this is the the constant. I bet if we searched for it on Wikipedia it would yeah, gravity equals 9.81 meters uh, divided by something squared. That's what S stands for, something. And take this and make it zero. So now if we go back and play, the grass doesn't do anything, which is exactly what we want. Now what is not exactly what we want is the ball is not affecting the grass yet. So let's make that happen. And the way we do that, it's pretty simple, is on the fracture object, not on the sphere, right click go to hair tags and add a hair collider and watch this puppy roll bam it is moving the grass just like that really nothing more to it you can play with the settings to kind of get the grass to dynamically behave a little different this is not how real grass would behave. I think it looks fantastical and cool. But what you can do is go into these dynamics. Just play with them and uh, and see what you get. Because, uh, you know, sometimes it just takes a bunch of tweaking. But I think this looks cool with what we have. So let's play this a little bit. And give it a render. Awesome. It's doing its job. So I really like top views with this kind of thing. So we can just do that and see what that looks like. Word, that is pretty cool. The only thing that's not cool is that it's poorly lit. In fact, it's not lit at all, which uh, definitely needs to change right about meow. And so what we're going to do is actually I'm going to use Grayscale Gorilla's HDRI Light Kit Pro because it's awesome. And if someone makes something awesome for you to use, you should use it. So uh, we're just going to use the daylight thing right here because that is freaking perfect. And now, if we go ahead and render from right here, we get this beautiful lighting with this beautiful shadow. Just some really great looking stuff. It does take tons longer to render. And when you're going to render a 150 frame animation or something like that, it might take you all night. But you're going to get these incredibly looking, incredible looking results. And uh, with his Light Kit Pro, there's a lot of settings you can do. So you can raise the height of the sun and uh, rotate it to get different you know times of day I guess or I guess that would be more about the height you know I, I just you know thought the Sun kind of went from one side to the other and that sort of indicated I don't know what but uh, you know and the world is flat apparently but yeah so that's how you control that and uh, the last thing I would do is give some texture to this sphere and uh, there's two parts to this that I actually want to show you the first part is actually texturing it. So we're going to make a new material by double clicking in the materials thing and we're really just going to give a reflection. And that's it. So I'm going to drag that over to the sphere. And then the other part is the grayscale daylight kit actually comes with it it has some textures built into it and one of them is the sky texture. So I'm going to double click that and in the color channel I'm going to load a sky image that I found on something called Google Images. And so it's like if you just typed in sky and pressed images, um, the gods of Google actually provide you with all of these awesome pictures that I can just use um, without permission. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to load that and immediately it's going to cause a reflection in this ball. So let's re render region right here. And awesome, we get the reflection, but the problem is it is way too bright. So really the way to fix this is just to go into the ball's texture and uh, lower the reflection to about, 
you know, a little lower than half, maybe 45 should do it. And if we just give this whole thing a render. Awesome. That is looking freaking sweet. You know, I think it's ready to render with the exception of one thing. And that is some motion blur. You're definitely going to want that. And if you don't have a plugin like a real smart motion blur to do that quick for you in After Effects, it can become really time consuming. Except in this case, there's actually a cool fix that's built into Cinema 4D. And that's vector motion blur. And uh, the first thing you would do, well, it doesn't really matter which order you do this in. But uh, just to get a handle on it, you would go into the render settings and under effect, press vector motion blur. Not scene motion blur or object motion blur, but vector. And uh, the way vector motion blur works is it will, it's this very fast, sort of efficient, but low quality motion blur that only applies to whatever you tag. So we're going to tag the fracture object, Cinema 4D tags, with a motion blur tag. And just in case, because I'm not exactly sure what it picks up, I'm going to drag it to the sphere as well. And I'm going to drag it to the grass. And so now when we render that out, it will render with motion blur, and it shouldn't take too much longer for your render. It's already taken a long time, so why not add an extra second or two and get better looking results? So we're going to do that, and I think I would majorly, because of that reflection, turn the anti-aliasing at least to best animation. If you really want to you know, make it spiffy, if you're thinking of going in 16 bits per channel, do a 2.2 or two times two and you'll get better results. Go ahead and render that sucker out. In the, in the demonstration you saw earlier, I just added a few extra shapes to give it some more interesting um, falling uh, physics. You know, you could do that by just adding what I did and doing the same exact thing. This cube and then I think I added a pyramid. But yeah, that's how you do it. Just dynamics and a hair collider to get the grass to react to the ball. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Hope it solved a problem of yours that you were having. Hope it gets you uh, riding on the creative train of life. So uh, stay tuned for more Creative Cow. I'm Neil Barenblatt. Thanks for watching. Ta-ta.